Hey everybody, Happy New Year. It is January 1st and it is another rainy day in the Arizona desert and I'm not going out there to work and I've got a 3D printing project. I've got in mind a little Fusion 360, a little printing, maybe even a little cutting and welding using what I 3D print. So you know what? Let's get at it. So one of the projects that I really need to start knocking out is making my kind of portable frame for the Vivor diesel heater just you know so I can have a frame around it with a real handle place to mount things and to store things on it so just kind of a grab and go type of solution and if you guys watch my videos you know that not only am I a cheapskate I'm also a minimalist and I also like to repurpose stuff so the bottom of my frame is going to be the three inch tube that used to be the bumpers and the sidebars of my old CJ7 and I want to cope it together. I want to, you know, miter the ends, cope it so that it fits together real nice. And there are websites you can go to, you know, where they, um, you can print out a piece of paper to wrap around your pipe and draw it. Or you could go down and spend money and buy a notcher. I've only got two pieces to do. I'm not going to buy a notcher for that. I'm just going to mark it and cut it with a plasma cutter. <clears throat> but I suck so bad with scissors and paper. And I've got a 3D printer, so I'm just going to 3D print myself a guide. And to do that, we need to come to Fusion and we need to make the guide. And I really think it's going to be fairly simple to do. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a sketch. And um, I like, since I'm going to a 3D printer, I like to use this bottom plane to print on. So I'm just now going to say top, so I'm looking directly overhead. And <clears throat> you can do this at any kind of angle you want. If you had 45s or 70 degrees, you can do that. I've just got direct 90, so it's going to be about as easy as it can be. But you can certainly use this method to make anything you want, including one that has the coping on each end and then has an angle rotation around. So whatever you want to do, you can do it with this same basic type of um, type of thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit L for line. And I'm just going to draw myself a line and I'm going to come up and I'm only going to make this thing about, I don't know, four inches long. What is four inches? About a hundred millimeters or so. So let's, and I may shorten that when I'm done because I'm not sure, but let's just say hundred millimeters. And now I'm going to make another line and I'm going to make it across the top here. And it doesn't really matter how long I make this since I'm going to cut most of it off anyway. <clears throat> Let's call this um, 80 just for sport and amusement. Okay, so now that I have this T-shape, I'm going to click on this line. I'm going to come over. I have to click. I have to get myself on solid here. And I'm going to say create pipe. So there's my pipe there. I've already thrown my sizes in. I'm 76.2 millimeters, which is three inches, and I have a two millimeter wall thickness. But you can change this over here and you can make this square. I mean, you can, you can make it triangular, whatever you want, and you can change these sizes. So <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is I am going to make, I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to click on I have to say OK to that first. Now I'm going to get my sketch back. Come on, sketch. Where are you? There we go. And now I'm going to do the same thing to this line. And I'm going to again say create pipe. It's going to use my same three inch pipe with the two millimeter wall thickness. 76.2 millimeter pipe, I should say. And we're going to say, oops, I did that wrong, didn't I? So I'm going to control Z back. And let's do it again, because that was a cut procedure, and I don't want to cut. So create pipe. I want to change cut to new body. And OK. Now what I want to do is I want to start getting rid of the pieces I don't want. And first, before I do that, I need to split the faces. So I'm going to come to modify and split face. See if I can get it right this time. I want, I'm pretty sure it was this. I want to split this face. And my splitting tool is going to be this one. All right? That does not look right, does it? It does not look right at all. I always do this backwards for some reason. Let's try it again. 
let's get rid of my selections and this time let's start with faces to split let's start with this one and let's make the splitting tool that one that looks like it might be better let's try that okay I think that may have gotten it that time and we're gonna now say now we need to make it obvious what we're doing so let's go to bodies I should have two bodies now one and two the top one and the bottom one and I want to isolate the one that I don't want let's see if I can get that right isolate I did it wrong didn't I yeah I don't know what it is I don't know what it is about this but I tend to do these things backwards all right so now what I need to do is just get rid of this stuff I don't want so to do that should be pretty simple I should just be able to hit Q for press pull I should be able to select this and that should be it I should just be able to do a negative a negative extrusion in the in the thickness of the um, the wall so I should be able to go minus two millimeters and enter and there is my piece now that's quite a bit longer than what I think I really need so I could go back and change that original measurement but to be honest with you it's just as easy to hit Q again for push pull select this bottom edge and just drag this up because I don't want to print any more of it than I have to um, right about there and okay and now I should just be able to print this and I'm gonna have to tweak it a bit because it's probably you know how 3d printing stuff is it's gonna shrink a little bit so I'm gonna save it and then I'm gonna give it a name I'm gonna load it into Cura Cura 5.2 available I thought I did it okay I'm not gonna fight that now I'll do that off camera we'll just go ahead and do this in Cura 5 I'm still set up to use the GTEC A10M and I have both PETG and PLA in it and I did PLA the other day for my wife I printed her some pointy sticks yeah I know it's amazing isn't it you have a 3d printer and you're printing yourself pointy sticks but she wanted a specific type of pointy stick for planting seedlings I think they call them dibbers or dibblers anyway I made her looks like a push knife except it's round could have made it out of a broomstick but you know how we you know how you are once you get a 3d printer you want to 3d print everything so let's go ahead and load that in what I just did and there it is well I made it on the wrong I made it on the wrong plane didn't I oh well such is life we'll just rotate it I try to make it on the correct plane so that if I put it up on Thingiverse um, it will nobody will have nobody will try and print it sideways like that oh but you know what I want to do let's um let's scale it and let's get my bottom diameter inside diameter should be three inches outside diameter should be well 76.2 outside diameter should be what um, 80.2 let's check it out so let's go scale and my bottom diameter my X diameter is 76.2 so that's not gonna work I need to scale that up <clears throat> I want the inner diameter so I'm gonna scale that up that X diameter all right so here is my finished 3d printed part and no this isn't the first one this is I think the third one had you guys been doing this and it turned out to be slightly too small you'd probably just cut it down one side and slip it over anyway as long as it's close it's not going to matter but since I want to upload this to Thingiverse and printables I wanted to get it fairly close so anyway here's a piece of pipe now you kind of use this two different ways and first off let's take a look and see how close we are on the cope and I would say that's pretty darn good um, remember this came off this is a piece of used pipe that came off my Jeep so it had a little bit of banging and wrestling so that's pretty close but you can use this a couple of different ways one you can slide it like that and you can see what a good job you do or your machine does making square cuts and you can see well that's actually pretty good for me to be honest let's try the other end um, yeah that looks like that looks like a more typical chuck cut right there and then you can square it off and then of course you can once you get it square and you can decide whether you even think it needs to be square before you do this probably really doesn't then you can mark it there 
you know, with a, a scribe or some some soapstone, and then you will have your you will have your cut to make so that you can cope it in good. And that's what I'm going to do. I've got two of these pieces. I've got to do each end of it. Okay, there you have it. All mitered up, cleaned up on the belt sander, and tack welded together. Is it perfect? Hell no, it's not perfect. But you know what? That's one of the nice things about building stuff for yourself. Or at least it is for me. There's a level of imperfection I'm willing to accept that I probably would not accept. No, I take it back. I would absolutely not accept if I was building this for somebody else and charging money for it. If I was doing it for free, sure, but um, not if I was charging money for it. Now, if you want to know why I made it out of three inch tube, partially it's because I already had it and I'm cheap, but another reason is this. I now have waterproof storage and I have 3D print end caps with rubber grommets for the wires to come in and out, but I now have waterproof storage for batteries and power supplies. If you want to know how this is all going to work, I'm going to have a video coming out in the next, I don't know, two to three weeks, and we are going to be putting this thing together, and um, yeah, hang around and watch it. Thanks for watching this video, guys, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.